Let me begin by confessing that the first time I saw the Suzuki Ignis, I just didn't like it and I shrugged it off based on their looks, which personally I didn't find very appealing, especially at the back. But after spending a bit of time interacting with the car, I've realized that this is a very good small city car. It's actually marketed as a crossover styled city car. Its competitors include the Toyota Paso and Nissan March. But ideally, when you look at what it has to offer, it almost seems like a class above the Paso and Nissan March, but still falls below the likes of the Fit, Demi and Vits. Though it surprisingly has some features that even the Fit and Demios miss out on. This Ignis may just be the best option in its class because it beats its competitors in almost every aspect, be it interior space, features and even the driving dynamics. Stay tuned to find out more about this crossover styled city car. But before that, please consider subscribing to the channel for more informative content on cars as well as bikes. Apart from informative automotive content, we also offer car consultation, independent in-depth reviews in the sense that we operate on a freemium model whereby what is offered here on the channel is free. But if you want even more detailed information to do with any car, be it servicing, mechanical aspects, the do's and don'ts and much more, then there's a small charge for that. We also source for new as well as local used cars. Welcome to Ikevoto Reviews. So we will be taking a look at the 2017 model of the Ignis, which is the second generation. It has been in production from 2016 till present. The first generation was available in Japan from the year 2000 and it was basically a rebadged Suzuki Swift. So this is a nameplate that has been in existence for over 20 years. Let's begin with the engine options. So you can get the Ignis with a 1200cc four-cylinder petrol engine in two variations one in an hybrid and the other one is a mild hybrid the non-hybrid produces around 90 horsepower while the mild hybrid adds an extra three horsepower so 93 horsepower in total this car is available in either front or all-wheel drive and transmission wise there's either five speed manual a cvt then there's also a five speed automated manual this is basically a manual transmission equipped with automatic actuation to operate the clutch and shift the gears now, this transmission was only available in, in European markets. So if you import from Japan, you'll only get either the manual or CVT. But if you import from Europe, you'll, you are likely to get that automated manual. But my advice is just get the manual or CVT. Those automated manuals are not that bulletproof in terms of reliability. Let's talk a bit about the mild hybrid technology. The Ignis uses an electric motor that Suzuki calls ISG or Integrated Starter Generator. Now this ISG motor is powered by batteries which by the way are located under the front passenger seat. This battery is charged as the car decelerates and brakes. This is what is commonly known as regenerative braking. This battery also helps to power the vehicle's electrical components such as the AC, uh, smartphone connectivity and much more. Something else that the battery does is that it assists the engine during acceleration. And in fact, if you drive the non-hybrid, then drive the mild hybrid, you'll notice that the mild hybrid is a bit faster in terms of acceleration. The battery is small, but you'll certainly feel the difference. So in a nutshell, the mild hybrid boosts the engine power and also increases efficiency by relieving the engine of powering electrical components, thereby saving more fuel. Remember, in normal vehicles, the engine powers the alternator, which charges the battery and powers the electrical components. But in the Ignis, even though it's a simple and mild hybrid technology, it still relieves the engine of powering most of the electrical components and consequently leads to much better efficiency. Reliability-wise, these engines are very reliable. In fact, there's nothing to worry about even in the hybrid. It's a simple setup and even if something goes wrong, you can still drive this car. You'll only lose about 3 horsepower and a bit of efficiency. 
Speaking of efficiency, expect between 15 to around 22 kilometers per liter, depending on how you drive. Though the mild hybrid is slightly better, it can get up to around 24 25 ish kilometers per liter if you are very light on the accelerator. This car also gets the idle stop function that shuts off the engine in traffic to help save that extra bit of fuel. The fuel tank is 32 liters, and as for the ground clearance, this car does very well. It measures in at an impressive 180 millimeters. This is better than some crossovers, so bumps and bad roads will not stop you whatsoever. Stopping power is made possible by ventilated discs at the front and drums at the back. This is a very light car, so drums at the back work perfectly fine. Suspension-wise, it gets McPherson struts at the front and a torsion beam setup at the back. The ride is on the slightly firm side of comfortable. I mean it's comfortable but just slightly firm compared to the competitors, but generally not bad at all. Moving on to safety, the standard features are driver and passenger airbags, ABS, EBD, brake assist, stability control, traction control and heel assist. The optional safety features depending on the trim level are side and curtain airbags, lane departure alert, emergency stop signal, seatbelt reminder, and dual camera brake support, which is essentially the collision mitigation system, which uses cameras and sensors. So it's very impressive. In fact, don't bother going for a base model. Just go for the top trim level, which has all the features because even the price difference is not that much. The top trim level will give you better safety features. The carb weight ranges between 840 to 940 kgs. And lastly, some of the extra features you can expect to get depending on the trim level are steering mounted audio controls, cruise control, alloy wheels, fog lights, infotainment screen, daytime running lights, projector headlights, a 360 degrees parking camera, dual tone interior, keyless entry and go, roof rails and paddle shifts. I'm sure you'll agree that it comes very well equipped. It beats cars that are even a class above it. What of the price? A 2017 model will set you back between 1 million to a maximum of around 1.25-1.3 million, but you can get a top trim level, especially in Mombasa, with around 1.2, with all the features like 360 degrees camera, two-tone interior, and active driver assist safety features such as lane departure and collision mitigation. At that price, you'll have got yourself a very well-equipped, small, but very spacious subcompact car. You can still get a Paso or a Nissan match with such an amount, but you won't get all those features in either of those competitors. Now, how about the looks of this car? Do let me know your opinion in the comment section. As I said earlier, at first I didn't, I didn't like its looks, especially the rear profile, but I think it's one of those designs that grow on you with time. I'm not saying I now like it, but I can live with it, especially considering the car itself has so many positives to offer. At the front, it looks basic, but in a good way, but at the back, it simply looks polarizing. You'll either love or hate it. One advantage of that high roof is excellent headroom in the interior. Speaking of the interior, it gets better. It's simple but very well laid out and functional. The infotainment screen is positioned well and not that far from the driver's line of sight. The AC controls also feel tactile and high quality. And this interior is made even better by the two-tone treatment in the upper trim levels. Generally feels quite nice. In fact, better than the Suzuki Swift. At the back, the space is on another level. Even six-footers will be comfortable back there. It's very roomy. The legroom is good, the headroom is even better, but being a narrow car, only two people will be comfortable back there on a long journey, but three at a squeeze and only for short journeys. The boot is not that spacious. I think they compromised on the boot space to give good space at the second row. That said, the boot is not too bad. It can swallow one large suitcase and a few other smaller items. So now, with all that out of the way let's quickly talk about the pros and cons of this car before we wrap up by giving my recommendation beginning with the pros this is a very much feature loaded car that is reliable spacious has good ground clearance it's efficient and affordable to maintain being that it shares the platform with other suzuki 
vehicles such as the wagon R. So spare parts are interchangeable even with the Suzuki Swift. So maintenance will be a breeze on this vehicle. Generally, it offers an almost perfect value for money proposition. On to its weaknesses, which are only two, and they are minor. The first one is the limited boot space. And secondly, it has polarizing looks, which some people may not find that appealing. Now, should you get this car instead of a Toyota Paso or Nissan Match? Absolutely. Get the top trim level and you'll get a very spacious, efficient, feature-loaded car, which is easy and affordable to maintain. A car with very good ground clearance. This can be a perfect car for running errands, venturing into the taxi business, or even delivering your products to your clients. Because once you fold down those back seats, you can fit in so much back there. The Honda Fit, Mazda Demio, Nissan Note, and Vits are a class above and better than this car, but they cost slightly more. But still, remember, this Ignis is one segment below those cars, but it has some very nice features that those four don't even offer. This is a car worth your consideration. Think about it. I hope this has been helpful. Thanks a lot for watching. As always, if you have any inquiries, feel free to reach me via WhatsApp or email. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. That's it for this particular episode. Stay safe, drive and ride safe. See you in the next one. But please subscribe before you go.